right, and now we begin with question five, which is trigonometry. All right, so let's go on with the first one. So I'm going to break this into two parts, right? So let's start with the first one. They say if cos of 21 is equal to P, right? Determine the following in terms of P, right? Now let's be very quick about this one. So we know already they've given us that the cos of 21 is equal to p so this we're going to write as a fraction so that means this is p over one remember cos is actually x over r so this tells us right if we were to draw that uh, uh, triangle right in the first tri uh, um, rather in the first uh, quadrant so we know that uh, in this case in the quest in the first quadrant both x and y should be positive, right? So in that case, it means that our x value is p, right? And our r value is 1. So we need to get the y value. So that means that y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. That's a theorem of Pythagoras. That's 1 squared minus p squared, right? So that would be the square root. So y would be the square root so we're going to take the positive square root because it's on the first quadrant so that's one minus p squared okay right so that's our uh, y value so now they say to us we must now determine uh, for 5.1.1 we must determine the tan of 201 all right now firstly let's simplify this so that means this is the tangent of, let's write it in terms of 21. That's 180 plus 21. So if we look at that, so ladies and gents, in our cast diagram, 10 of 180 plus, that's in the third quadrant, right? So remember cast, C-A-S-T, right? That's in the third quadrant. The third quadrant, 10 is positive, so that's the same as just simply saying 10 of 21 degrees. Now, remember that 10 is y over uh, x, okay? Or you can say that is opposite over adjacent. So our y, okay, is that value. So this will be square root of 1 minus p squared divided by, uh, so y over x, so this is divided by p okay so that is our final answer right now ladies and gents it's also a kind of um, uh, you know helpful at times to also have this as uh, if we know that's 21 degrees it's also helpful to find that angle there and all you do is say 90 minus uh, 21 okay so that would give us um, so that would be 70 nine degrees right okay uh, in fact that's 69 is it okay so that's 80 yeah that would definitely give us 90 degrees all right so that's 69 degrees so now let's look at the next one they say the sign of 42 so how are those related to 21 so if i say sign of 42 well, you'll agree with me that 42 is 2 times 21. And we know from our double angle formulae that the sine of a double angle, all right, so this would be sine, uh, rather 2 sine of 21 cos of 21. So this would be 2 multiplied by, so we already know uh, from the previous one, or rather, uh, we know that sine is y over r, our y value. That's square root of 1 minus p squared over 1. Multiplied by cos of 21. That's x over r. So our x value in this case we said was p over 1. And so that means this will be 2p multiplied by the square root of 1 minus p squared and that's our final answer for the sine of two times 40 oh, i mean the sine of 42 right so for 5.1.3 let's go on to the next one 
So they give us the sine of 51, or rather cos of 51. So the cosine of 51 degrees. Now you'll note that, uh, of course, here we need to use our um, compound angle formula, right? But what we're going to do is break 51 into 30, which is a special angle as well as 21, which is the angle that we're given, right? And remember that the cos of A plus B, right, will always give us uh, cos A, cos B, minus, so cos changes sine, minus sine A, sine B, all right? So we're going to do exactly that. So this would be equal to cos 30, cos 21, minus the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 21, right? So the cosine of 30 degrees, right? This is square root of 3 over 2 multiplied by the cos of 21. Remember, you had already gotten that. That is P over 1, okay? Minus sine 30 is 1 over 2. Right, and in this case, sine of 21, this would be square root of 1 minus p squared divided by 1. So, uh, in this case, what do we have? Root of 3 multiplied by p minus square root of 1 minus p squared. Our denominators are both uh, in terms of p, I mean, uh, rather both 2, 2 times 1, 2 times 1, so that would mean that our denominator is just simply equal to 2. And that is our final answer. All right, ladies and gents, uh, that is how the cookie crumbles on that question. Right, now let's look at this next question. So they say sine uh, 210, cos of 510, okay, divided by cos 315, and sine of 135, right? We need to simplify. So for 5.2, right? So let's go back to our question. So they said sine of 210, and they said cos of 510, right? Okay, and they said we divide that by uh, cos 315 sine negative 135. Okay, so cos of 315 and the sine of negative 135. Now, remember all the time when they give you these, they will always say to you simplify, right? So we need to try and simplify this as much as possible. Right, now let's do that very quickly, ladies and gents. Now let's uh, let's say, okay, so we've got a value there, which is sine of 210. How can we simplify it in terms of uh, the reduction formula? So we're going to say this is sine of 210. Uh, notice, uh, ladies and gents, I'm just going to go back to that. So it's important for you to always take, I know, uh, you know, we've, we always have degrees. Okay, you can write them after. Right, so You've got cos of 315, right? Uh, so it's always important for you to, uh, to remember that these big angles, you must actually try and reduce them as much as possible. Right, now if I look at this, uh, 210, this is the same as 180 plus 30 degrees, all right? The cosine of... Now, any time that you've got an angle that exceeds 360, let's try and reduce it. Let's subtract 360. Remember, if you add or subtract 360, it changes nothing, right? So if I say 510 minus 360, right, I get an angle of 150, right? So I'm going to say this is 510 minus 360. Okay, which gives me 150. This is divided by 
the cosine of 315. So if I said 360 minus 45, okay? And finally, every time I've got the sine of a negative angle, you just simply add 360 to it. So this would be sine of 360 minus 135, okay? Right, so let's try and reduce this. So sine of 180 plus, so let's take our cast diagram, right? So sine of, uh, there's our cast diagram, sine of 180 plus, that's definitely in the third quadrant, right? Sine is negative there, so that will give me negative the sine of 30 degrees, right? And cos of 510 minus 360, remember I said to you, this would be the same as cos of 150, right? But if I look at 150, that can also be written as 180 minus 30 degrees, right? So if you don't mind, I'm just going to do that. So this would be 180 minus 30 degrees, right? And so this would give me, right, um, uh, the cos of 360 minus 45, right? So that's definitely in the fourth quadrant. So that would give us cos of 45 degrees, right? And uh, sine of 360 minus 135. So if we do that, if we say 360, Okay, minus 135. Uh, okay, so for some reason, I keep pressing the wrong stuff there. 360 minus 135, that gives me 225. So this would be the sine of 225. Now, uh, of course, I can also reduce this further because 225 is 180 plus 45 okay so that means what does this give me the sine of 30 degrees negative sine of 30 degrees okay i'm just going to just leave them as they are okay and cos of 180 minus 30 remember this is in the second quadrant right so cosine is negative over there so this would be negative cos of 30 degrees divided by cos of 45. I'm just going to leave it as is, right? And the sine, right? Remember I said to you, this is the same as saying uh, 180 plus 45. Okay. So this is sine of 180 plus 45. Right, now to reduce it even further, that's negative sine 30, negative cos 30. Now remember, negative times a negative gives me a positive. So I'm just going to say sine 30, cos of 30, divided by cos 45. Okay, and notice now, sine of 180 plus, remember that sine is negative that's in the third quadrant sine is negative there so that's negative sine of 45 now ladies and gents let's try and simplify this sine of 30 is 1 over 2 cos of 30 is root 3 over 2 divided by cos of 45 is 1 over square root 2, okay, and sine of 45 is also negative 1 over square root of 2, right? These are our special angles, right? So this would give me root 3 over 4 divided by, now note, uh, we've got negative all right, that's 1 times 1, which is 1, and square root 2 times square root 2, which would give me 2. So let's try and simplify there. Root 3 over 4, 
multiplied by negative sorry negative 2 over 1 and we know that 2 goes into itself once and into 4 it goes twice so our final answer there would be right remember there's still that negative 1 so that's negative root 3 over 2 all right and that is how we get to that final answer right let's go into the second portion of this question